Paulson. Fair to say this ARPG has a bad rep, and for a good reason. Massively buggy on launch, broken with duping and busted uniques, and an extremely unimaginative endgame. But a year and a half later and a handful of updates, just how far has it come? Today, I'm going to share my honest thoughts of my deep dive into Wilson, Lords of Mayhem. Welcome, it's your friendly neighborhood Badger here and I'm back to explore Wilson. Having played this game on launch, it didn't impress me at all, like many others who are hyped for a new addition to the ARPG scene. I had so many bugs just within the first act that I couldn't even progress, ending my experience right then and there on that first day. But after Wilson endured a lengthy stay at the bottom of my Steam list, I thought, why not give it a try? What's the worst that could happen? Let's go, in and out, 20 minutes adventure. Eight hours later. Whew. Well, uh, that was actually enjoyable. Let me break it down for you. Leveling a new character through the story, I was fortunately able to make it past the first act without any game-breaking bugs. Uh, wait, even the second act? I even... I can't check my inventory. Oh! Oh! That one might be a bug! Okay, never mind that. I just portaled out and back in, and I made it through the entire story relatively safely. My game didn't fully crash. I enjoyed the process. Granted, I was playing with the new revamped summons, and they are widely considered to be extremely overtuned. The process of doing so was, for the most part, very straightforward. I made some mistakes with my build, but respecking both the basic skill points and the skill tree passives was cheap and effective. I think I ended up fully redoing three times throughout the story with no problems whatsoever. However, the reason for redoing so often was due to a big downside. I had no freaking idea how these minions scaled. Could I buff them to deal more ailment damage? Could I scale melee damage for the melee skeletons? After consulting with some people in my chat who knew a lot more about the game than I did, it turns out minion scaling is confusing as all heck and has no consistency. For example, skeleton archers can scale with projectile modifiers, but melee skeletons don't scale with melee modifiers. There's a lot more where that came from, but all in all I ended up on a toxic damage minion spec. Don't get me wrong, I wasn't bashing my head against a wall, but if I didn't have help from some five headers out there, I probably still would be trying to scale poison ailments on my minions who cannot even scale poison ailments. Speaking of the skills and passive tree, let's take a short detour over there. At first glance, the passive tree, or more like a wheel, is quite visually impressive. There are three rings, and each ring can be rotated to line up your perfect combination of damage, defense, and utility. And on first glance, at many of the nodes, it seems like there's a world of fun to play around with. But after a while, you'll probably realize that nothing here really has much weight to it. Nodes blend into each other, and once you lock in that rotation after the first few points, there's no real chance of getting over to a different spec unless you just redo everything. Basically, the novelty of this impressive skill point selection menu wears off extremely quickly. And the other passive points you get for these base attributes... Let's just say the only real thing for me to do was stack every single point into defense because literally nothing else scaled my minions in any way. I'm sure this would have been quite different for any other build, but it kind of sucked to realize, okay, I'm going to chuck 500 points here because that's all I can do. Lastly, on character progression, the skills themselves. Once again, take this with a grain of salt because minions are extremely overpowered as of this moment, but I did have a ton of fun leveling with them, and even any other skill I tried quickly felt good. We're talking bone-crunchingly good. Hell, even the auto-attacks feel satisfying. It's something that's definitely difficult to get right in an ARPG, and you might disagree with me, but I could definitely feel the weight of these skills. It's hard to put a finger on it, but I think a lot of it has to come down to sound design. Both on casting and hitting enemies, the sounds made give a sense of oomph to anything you did. Plus, there was a skill called Parasite that let me summon any monster in a zone, and it was super fun to find some hilarious mobs to run with me. I will never forget my favorite boy. 
<laughs> this guy yelling. <laughs> but in true skill point allocation blunder fashion, actually leveling these skills up and selecting skill modifiers felt largely just like increasing numbers slightly. Some damage over here, some attack speed over there. Nothing was impactful in any active way, instead opting for minor passive changes. If it's one thing that rubs me the wrong way, it's poor skill choices. But how about some more wins for Wilson, hey? If there's one thing that Wilson does have going for it, it's how pretty it can look. Camera pans and zooms during walking moments, amazing sense of depth in dungeons, it really was a joy to experience each individual zone. Each act felt fresh, with new environments coming and going, new backdrops to give you a sense of scale in the Wilson world. Kudos to the art direction in this game. From the micro to the macro, I was impressed across the board. For the writing, however... Look, there's people who like a good story. Then, there's people who are fans of ARPGs. Let me slice open some demon spawn already. Stop talking about the fate of the kingdom or how your grandfather is ill. I get it. You're suffering. So am I through this god-awful dialogue. In terms of gearing, there's actually not much to really say. It's very standard ARPG gearing, with normal, magic, rare, and unique items, with legendary items being an addition above rare tier, craftable, but with a high cost to do so. I didn't find any need whatsoever to do any crafting, as I would often find upgrades on the ground very easily, so I didn't delve into that side of things, but it's not much to write home about. Pick up loot, hover over it, is it better? Yes? No? I don't know, sell it to the vendor and move on. But once you've made it through the story, a new opportunity awaits. The end game. What end game, you ask? Well, I'm still trying to figure that out for myself. The end game in Wilson is a bit like an indoor mini golf course. A bit rough around the edges, yet kind of fun while it lasts, but you realize after a while that there are a lot of holes, and they all just kind of blend into each other, with each one just getting a little bit more difficult than the last. The main content is focused around expeditions, which are basically rifts from Diablo 3. Click a button, see a modifier, make it harder if you want, run the zone, kill monsters, kill the boss, rinse, repeat, log out of the game, log back into Path of Exile and run some maps. But in all seriousness, there isn't really any depth whatsoever. However, the content does scale, and from what I've heard, it scales very, very high, so if you want, you can treat it like a challenge. Some people like challenges, like seeing how long you can hold your hand over an open flame before blisters show, or seeing if the wall will break before your skull does. Uh, alongside these expeditions, you can also upgrade your town. Select some projects, run the expeditions to gather productivity, collect rewards, and build up. Granted, some of these rewards from the projects are actually pretty neat, like unlocking a fifth skill slot or getting a permanent magic find boost. But the costs are massively high to even start some of these projects, so to even get any benefit from this mechanic, a ton of grinding has to be completed first. And that's about it in terms of the endgame. So where exactly does Wilson sit in terms of ARPG experience? Well, as you've heard here, there are a ton of problems with the game, but I kept coming back to one thing. I was having fun playing it. I'm not sure if it was the overtuned minions or the crunching sounds of bodies hitting the floor, but I had a good time. Heck, I even want to jump back in for a few more hours and see where I can push the build to. Do I see this becoming a staple ARPG in my rotation of high society players in the genre? No, not at all. But will I come and visit every now and then on long weekends when there's nothing to do and you call me up saying, you've changed? Yeah, I just might. Thanks for watching everyone. If you enjoyed this content, the best thing you can do for me is give the video a thumbs up. And if you're feeling as audacious as I have been tackling this topic, subscribing is pretty darn cool as well. I'll catch you all around for my next review of Wilson in 18 years time when their next update drops.